Hi everyone, it's Shell from Scrap Secrets and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're going to be creating this scene card using the Honeybee Stamps front porch layering dies. So here are all the dies that come in the set. There are a ton of them. I took the base piece and cut it out of some light gray cardstock. We're going to be using some Distress Oxide to go over the all the stones and that is in hickory smoke you can see i brought out my stamp wheel from altenew i love this for holding dies down the only thing i do have to say about this is that if you have really thin pieces of cardstock the back can be sticky and it's almost like when you have a new sticky cricket mat um, the paper will bend up a little bit so you just kind of have to work with it so the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and take the A piece from the frame, the roofing frame, and I had some brown ink left on a brush, just ran it over that. And then these are the, I guess, is it the corbels or is that what they call them? They're just like little corner pieces on the, uh, on the roof or on the, the front line. And I went ahead and used some frayed burlap on them. And then I used, I believe I used some vintage photo on the next layer. And then this layer is the, I'm trying to think of what this one's, the ground espresso. So I went for darker colors on each and every piece. So if you notice on the left-hand side, there is a layering guide, which is absolutely fantastic. And you can see, I don't, you really can't see it on camera, but in person, you can see that there is a slight difference between all of the colors that they use for the layers. So it gives you a really good idea of what it'll look like together at the bottom right-hand corner. And then the top shows you the different colors. So I cut it out of all of the same color cardstock, but then I decided to go ahead and ink up the rest of the pieces to give it a little bit of contrast. I didn't want them all to be the exact same because you're going to have shadows on these pieces because they're all layered together. After I finished inking up all those pieces, I'm going to go back to the base layer and going to be adding some of the details in. So the top has either shiplap, siding, whatever you wanna call it up there. And I wanted to bring out those detail lines. So I used a Copic marker in C3 in the indentations that were there. And then I put the frames over it just to make sure it looked okay. Then I moved on to the rocks. I wanted to make this look a little bit like my house. My top has siding on it and then I have rocks about three quarters of the way down and there is grout in between there. So I picked up a jelly roll pen in white and went around all of the rocks. I didn't have to go all the way down to the bottom because there are going to be lots of pieces covering this up and in the end you don't see too much of this. So I could have put all the pieces in place and just done the white gel pen in the areas that were going to be seen. But honestly, it didn't take me a super long time. So I was just watching TV and doing this. Not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit to the door. So I took a B99 Copic marker and was just going around all of the squares and rectangles in the door. And then we're going to go ahead and start gluing this piece together. So I'm taking the very bottom layer of the frame and gluing it down to that gray base that we created. I used Barely Arts glue because I like that you can, it has a little bit of wiggle room with this and it has a very fine tip. So I really like using this to apply all the die cuts on this one because there are some really, really skinny pieces. So once that piece is on, then I'm going to go ahead and layer the next layer. Again, to the left-hand side of the porch, you can see the layering guide over there and it makes it so easy to put everything together. They show you each of the layers cut out in different colors and then what it looks like assembled. So once that was done, I'm going to put, I think these are corbels, but I'm not sure. If you guys are architects or if you know anything about design, and I probably should, I took a lot of interior design classes, um, let me know below. For some reason, I just, I think that's what they are, but I'm not 100% positive. So I'm popping those into place. And then we're going to put that, that last like little A-frame on there. It does matter how you put these together because that A-frame sits right on top of those. So I would 
assemble it in the order that I went ahead and assembled it, I used the, again, I used the guide to see how this would all go together. Now we're going to put the base of the door and the door frame on there. And there are little caps for the bottoms of the post on the left and the right. So I'm just using whatever gray ink was left from that hickory smoke that we inked the rocks up with adding it to those two and then putting some glue down and adding those on to the base. One of the things that I love so much about honeybees dyes are there's so much detail in everything. If you look at those little pieces that we just put on, there are like embossed details in it, even in the smallest pieces in these layering sets. Love it. So now I'm using that same Barely Arts glue to go ahead and glue the back of the door frame down, and then we're going to get ready to glue everything together. I wasn't sure if I wanted to glue the door in place first, but I decided to actually work from the outside in. So I'm going to put glue behind those other pieces, like the side panels for the door where you would have, they have like little window cutouts. So I put the left one down and then the right one down. And then there are also pieces like little columns that I'm going to glue down. I did them in white, but I still, it gives it still a little bit of dimension. And once those were glued down, I was able to figure out exactly where the door needed to go. This way I didn't have to worry about spacing or anything and just made sure that the door looked good in between the two. And we are going to actually glue the window that goes above the door first. And this piece has some really, really fine lines, which again is why I love this Barely Arts glue. Popped that into place and then got ready to glue the door down. And this is the entire piece. There are some other accessory pieces to this die set if you were just doing the front porch but I decided that I wanted to make it Christmassy so I am using one of the coordinating die sets to go ahead and finish decorating. The die set that we're going to use is the Honeybee Stamps Holiday Front Porch Add-On set and there are a ton of dies in here. You can see I cut out the two of the tree dies with their planters. I cut out their wreath, the bow, and actually those two lamps that you see on there were accessories from the original set. I wasn't sure if I wanted to add these on or not, but then I decided, yes, let's do it. And then I also cut out three strands of light because we're going to decorate this not in the same manner that it is shown on the layering guide. I wanted to put my own spin on it. So I went ahead and highlighted some of the embossed lines on the trees as well as the planters. And now I'm going in and adding some shading on the bow, which actually really isn't necessary because I do something else later on to go ahead and cover that up. But I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. And I like to color the pieces or give it a little bit of shading before we go ahead and assemble them. I pulled the wreath down off of the door and I'm going in with a, I think it's a G18 or G19 marker and adding some dimension to that or put some Copic marker in the lines so that you can see all that texture that's in there. Added the bow and now I'm adding the bottom to the two planters. And then we're going to get ready to do the lights. So I am using a Y, I think it's a Y18 marker. And then these gray markers, this is like a, this is a Spectrum Noir marker, I think, possibly. Maybe it's not. I can't remember. It's an off-brand that I just had a couple of. So went ahead and added gray to that and going to go ahead and put the two pieces together. Once I did, I didn't line them up exactly perfectly and you could see a little bit of the white edge around. So what I'm going to do is take that same marker and go all around the edges like I do when I fussy cut an image out and go along with a black marker just to kind of make it look finished. So you see me doing that here. I will do that to both of the pieces and we are now going to glue the wreath to the front door. In the images, the bow is at the top. For some reason, I don't like that. I like when the bow is at the bottom of the wreath, just a personal preference, so I went ahead and did that. I'm going to go ahead and add some berries to the wreath. I do believe that there are 
some like dyes that can help you do this. I just wanted to use this red sparkle glitter glue that I've had forever. This is probably from Joann's and my Joann's has actually moved. We have a new one and it's, I know it's from the old Joann's, which I hadn't been to in several years. So these glitter glues are very old. Here are the lights that I cut out from some green cardstock, and you'll see the other two strands at the top. We're going to put the first one down because I wasn't sure that I was going to use the second and third strand. There's also a banner, kind of like a, a swag banner that you can put on there, and you can put the bow on that. There's lots of different accessories. There's a snowman in this set as well, a lot as you can see on the left-hand side, the layering guide for the snowman. I'm going to go ahead and pop those trees onto the front porch and do the same thing with that red glitter glue and add little like berries to the trees. Again, there are dyes that will cut those out as well as the lights. And I think there's two different bulbs in there. It's the round ones and then the more traditional like almond shaped ones. But I decided that I was going to not do that and I wanted to make them the white lights. So... I will show you what I do in a minute. I'm first going to glue these lanterns on or these the little lampposts or the little side lights on to the front porch. And I'm really liking the way this is coming together. But I also wanted to add light in there, like look, make it look like the house was full of life and bright and maybe even some Christmas lights on inside. So I'm going to use that same Copic marker and go ahead and color in all of the side windows and the window at the top. Then I did decide that, yes, I'm going to go ahead and put strands of light on the left and the right side of the roof because I wanted this house to be super festive and have a ton of lights. So you see me using that Barely Arts glue to go ahead and attach the first and second lines of string down on the, or sorry, second and third line uh, strands of light on that house. I'm using some stickle glue, or stickles in, I believe, Stardust. And I did not do what I tell you guys to do all the time is test it off to the side and it went everywhere. So I'm using my craft pick to go ahead and push it back onto the light bulb. Just went and added a dot to every one of the lights just for some a little bit of sparkle and shine. You can cut these out in whatever color you want. I just thought that it would be like the traditional green strung lights you know they have the green string on it and then the white lights I decided to do a five by seven card base so I cut a piece of cardstock down to a quarter of an inch smaller than that and I'm using a couple colors of distress oxide the first one was uncharted mariner then we're using mermaid lagoon which you don't really see in the end uh, then we use prize ribbon and we're going to go in with Villainous Potion and then some uh, Black Soot. You will see later on that I took this off of the stamp wheel, which, again, I used one, I used really thin cardstock. Two, I took it off of the stamp wheel. And I will get a lot of creasing in it because the paper kind of bunches up. Keep your paper in your stamp wheel. I know it will curl and maybe you, like this piece is rather large. This is a, a little bit, small, like I said, a little bit smaller than a five by seven. Um, I probably should have left it in there and just gotten a smaller brush to go in with the black soot. So while you're watching me do the rest of this, I thought that I would talk a little bit about the series that Marie and I are doing. This video is not part of it. However, it's just a Christmas video. But I did want to tell you about the series that we have. If you guys have not seen it, make sure you go check it out. I will leave a link to the intro video for my channel in the description box below. I will leave a link to Marie's channel. She and I got together. So it's Marie from Marie's Vermont Creations. She and I got together and picked out 25 different themes, techniques, um, stamp sets, etc. Put them in a randomizer and are doing 25 days of projects. She and I have different crafting styles so you'll get to see the same of whatever we're doing for that day used in two different ways. So hopefully it'll give you guys some inspiration. I am super far behind on my Christmas cards. I was supposed to be making, start like starting to do my mass, Chris, mass producing of my Christmas cards. And instead I decided to do this. 
And then yesterday I took Nora for the day. So I have a, she wanted to do a video. So I have a video for Mila and for Nora that we need to do voiceovers for. So I'll grab them and, and do those ones. So I'll have some videos that are not part of the series, but Christmassy and kid inspired. They did some of the cutest projects. Uh, Nora did some adorable things. I love the way her stuff came out. I had Brooklyn and Madeline. They did their stuff, but we didn't really have time to do videos. They were only at my house for a little while. I brought the other stuff to them. So don't have voiceover videos for them, but I did show you guys what they made. All right, so let's get back to the card. We are now going to do the background. I wanted it to be like a starry or even a snowy night. So I put some of the white pigment ink from MFT onto a black, sprayed some water on it, and just taking a brush and flicking it onto the paper. It was kind of watery, so you're getting some water plus some of the white pigment ink. And I think this is um, Sweet Tooth White Pigment Ink from MFT. Added a little bit more onto the block, went ahead and did the whole background and then kind of jabbed it off. The last thing that we're going to do is we are going to be using a stamp from, this is from Lawn Fawn and I think it is Winter Wishes. I'm using the Santa with the reindeer in the sky so it looks like it's flying over the front porch. If I had to do this over again, I probably would have done kind of like a little house in the background too because it is it is just the front porch. It's not the whole house. But let's, you know, we'll suspend reality for a little bit and make it, you know, make sense. So once that was all done, I am taking my Barely Arts glue, adding glue to the back and adding it to a five by seven card base. I always check to make sure that the opening is the correct way because I've done it more than one time where I've glued a panel down and it opens the wrong way. So once the front panel is glued down, we are going to get ready to glue the front porch down. And you can see it does look like it's a skinny house. So you, I guess it could pass for a house, but I might do some, like if I was gonna do another five by seven with this, I would probably do like the sides to the house too or something else add to, added to it. But honestly, I was supposed to be getting more Christmas cards done and this was longer than I thought I was going to be. So once I attach that to the front of the card, that is the card for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have comments or questions, please feel free to leave them below. And I'll see you again real soon for another video. Bye!